not in both the applied and free trial and the essentials, but he did trade 10, 11, and 12 in all the maps. So if you're headed to free trial, we're going to use right angle trigonometry. I just finished it with my grade 11 free trial, uh, and we'll use it for the unit circle in grade 12. For applied, we're going to do cosine law and sine law that I do with my grade 11. If you were doing another assignment other than third grade, I'm not talking about it. All your assignments for that unit are posted online, and that is one of them. Okay, so trigonometry deals with triangles. Sine, cosine, and tangent. Are the three primary trig ratios? There's three more, but we'll just talk about these three for right now. Um, we are going to use them to find sides and angles. Okay. All right. So here's how you label a triangle. If it's an uppercase letter, it's representing a vertice. A vertice is just a bounding outward vertical letter. Okay. That's vertices. So this would be, and it represents. Um, this represents an angle. So this would be angle capital B. Everybody get that? Like you've got a corner, it should be a capital letter. Okay. So um okay. Uh, okay, so vertices are capital letters. To label the side, it's directly across from it. And we label that with a lowercase letter. So this would be side B. Where would side A be located? Bottom. Bottom. You guys are brilliant. And side C? Okay. So lowercase letters denote side. Sometimes I'll also do this for side. So I'll say A, capital A to capital B. So capital A to capital B would be this side. With side C. Uh, you could start from B to A, but usually you read it as it stands there. So just draw on your fingers. Start at A, go to B, so that would be side C. Okay, make sense? Yeah. Um, that me? So that just means angle A. So great. Okay, so in math, we have the greater than sign, which is like, like a B. The angle sign has a flat side. Okay, so it's a flat horizontal, and then it's representing like the shape of an angle, right? So this would mean, this means angle sign. And that is a greater than sign. I always write my angle signs like this. Uh, I'm lazy and I'm a little bit sloppy. But if you see them in the map, it should be a flat, a flat horizontal. Okay, uh, angles of triangle or like capital letters, or sometimes we use Greek letters. Uh, the most common one for an angle is theta. Okay, you ready? We're going to draw a circle, and as we come up, we're just going to loop through. Yeah. So that's the Greek letter theta, Greek letter theta, and we use it sometimes to represent an angle. So if I don't know what the angle measurement is, oftentimes I'll use theta, or sometimes I'll use alpha, which is the fifth, or beta. Beta. Uh, we usually use. <laughs> yeah. Theta. Yeah. yeah. An unknown angle. So we would use these three to represent an unknown angle. Could you use X? Could you use A? Could you use K? For sure. Absolutely. But it's common in trigonometry that we use Greek letters for the unknown for the unknown angles. Just so you, when you see them, you're not surprised by them and you know the names of them. So theta 
theta alpha. And if you want the rest of the green alphabet, it's up above the non green R. Uh, which connects to it? Um, I don't know if it's it, but if you go up closer to it, it's got both of them. If you go up close to it, it's got two tails of the top and bottom. Okay, so obviously a lowercase, this one's an uppercase, no, this one's a lowercase, and this one's a lowercase as well. Okay, so we're using all lowercase Greek letters to solve, uh, to show an unknown angle. How do you guys feel about that? Are we okay? You're getting a really good at drawing theta. Theta? Theta, yeah. Theta. Theta. Okay. Now we're going to learn how to label the sides. So we've got three different types of sides. We have our we have our hypotenuse. We have an opposite side, and we have an adjacent side. I use the three-letter abbreviation because I don't have time in my life to spell hypotenuse, and I'll probably get it wrong. What's that? Okay, we don't have that time in our lives. We are we are very busy people. Okay, so the hypotenuse, and these are only for right angle triangles. These only occur. Do you guys know what a right angle triangle is? What is it? So I'm not going to have a hypotenuse in a triangle that doesn't have a 90 degree. Okay, so this only works for 90 degree triangles. And so in grade 10, we're going to work with 90 degree triangles. In grade 11, we're going to go 90 degree triangles and then bigger. And then in grade 12, we'll bring it back to the 90 degree triangles. Okay. Um, and everybody knows, does everybody know this, that the box represents 90 degrees? Yeah. Okay. I'm just making sure that I'm not going to be Okay, so the hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. And the hypotenuse is always the longest side. Do you guys remember this? You would have to know this for Pythagorean theorem. Although a squared plus b squared equals b squared. Okay. All right. Okay. So 90 degree angle. So directly across from the 90 degree angle is my hypotenuse. Okay. So now, now we have to go to the so we're not worried about the 90 degrees, we're looking for the indicated angle. So in this case, angle A is the one that's been indicated. Okay, so the one across from the indicated angle is called the opposite side. So this is your opposite side. And the one that is right next to the angle, touches the angle, makes up the angle, is your adjacent side. Yep. Oh, see what happens when you come right there. I don't give you a. I don't know. Didn't you tell me that? I can't remember these things. Yeah, I remember. I can't see my watch. It's been vibrating. The vet calls, and I can't see my watch. It's just it's been gone. Because I just put it over the top. Am I? I don't know. I guess we'll talk. I can talk. I can talk. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I will sound very muffled though. Um, okay. So here's the thing. Opposite. So we find our indicated angle and we're across from it. The adjacent side makes up the angle with the hypotenuse. This is my very excited thing. Nobody else gets excited about that. So everybody tilt their head to the right. And what letter does that make? Okay. So it's the adjacent side makes up the letter A of the hypotenuse. 
there's one vote count still could go on, things like that. Um, so, so, uh, so hard. All right. All right. So we are going to calculate the ratio. So all I'm asking you to do, ladies and gentlemen, hi. I know we're distracted. Um, I'm going to ask you to put it just as a fraction. Okay. So we are going to find. Okay. In order to calculate the length of LM, so the highlight LM. That side we're that side we're trying to find. What tree ratio would I use? So what side do I know? What's this one? This is the hypotenuse. Good job. What side? What side is the one I'm looking for? Okay, my angle's up here, guys. It's not down here. The 55 is in this corner. So what side is my orange side? Opposite. Okay, now what tree formula has opposite and hypotenuse? So, so, uh, oh, okay. Quick question. Yeah. Yeah. Are we solving the opposite? Yeah, and if we are solving for the opposite side, we're not actually going to solve for it. We're just going to figure out what ratio to use, because that's a whole other lot of steps. The adjacent side would be here. I'm not looking to solve for MN. I'm looking, the question asked me, I want to solve for LN. No, the thing is, we already have the adjacent to an angle. But I don't, I have an angle. That says 55 degrees. So that's an angle measurement. Look at your paper. Okay, so that's a really good, Abby makes a good point. Just remember that angles are given inside the triangle. Side lengths are given outside. So angles are written inside the triangle. Side lengths are written outside the triangle. Okay, so we're trying to solve for our T. So what side is our T in this triangle? It's my hypotenuse. What side do I already have? Okay, so what tree formula has adjacent and hypotenuse in it? Do I care anything about RT? No. Don't care. Can you see how it is? Okay, Claire. Claire. Now I'm solving for angle C. So where's angle C? Right here. That's angle C. You guys all agree with me? Yeah? You think we were putting our phones away, remember? Upside down, hidden somewhere. Okay, so what side do I have? What is the three? The adjacent side and the hypotenuse. So what tree formula has adjacent and hypotenuse in it? Okay, so for the next one, uh, for the next one, we're calculating the length of K L. Why would I use cos? Okay, so what two sides did I have? I was trying to find angle C. I have my hypotenuse and I have my adjacent side. So what straight formula has adjacent and hypotenuse in it? Because I don't have a length for opposite. This would be my opposite. Like I don't have the information there. So, yes, I can totally label my side, but I don't have any numbers to work with. Okay. okay. So, KL, let's look at KL. I'm trying to solve for KL. What side is that? 
the adjacent. What side is my three side? Opposite. opposite. What trig formula has opposite and adjacent in it? Yeah. Well, that's the location of the angle is 52 degrees. So angle L is 55 degrees. So we know what this angle is. That's 52. So this side would be the adjacent the angle of 52. Yeah. Yeah. We're not from my hearing. Oh. You should call my mom. She's leaving for Florida tomorrow, so I won't be able to get over her. I'm going to Winnipeg. Because I do math and stuff. I go down there and I'm going to make that. No, this month I'm missing. It's going to slow down. It's going to slow down, I promise. But you have Mr. Rapoport, so he's. he's uh, didn't he just tell that he was the goat for doing rate of change? So I'm not abandoning you, I'm leaving you with like the guru of that. So okay. Three puzzles. All right, you need a calculator in front of you. Okay. Alright, you need a calculator. You definitely need a calculator in front of you. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to make sure you are in green. Okay, so if it's you, you're gonna go to map. <laughs> This is why I'm talking about people being distracted. Like it takes so much longer to do something so simple because we're spending time like me trying to get your attention. What I need you to see is if you're using a scientific calculator, you're using one of these. You're going to see the letter D, or you're going to see the letter D E G on the display screen here. Okay. Okay. If you are using one of these, if you are using one of these, you're going to go to mode. You're going to go to mode, and you're going to check. This is going to show you on the screen. You're going to check that you are in degree. The degree will be highlighted. You're going to look around the cover there. I have no idea what. Uh, so this one, this one shows just the letter B. Just the letter B. So your options can be. Okay, so what I want you guys to do is I want you to, now here's the thing again. Each calculator is different. So if you have a graphing calculator in your hand, you're going to hit hand this button first, and then you're going to type in 45, and then you're going to type in. So you have a graphing calculator. And hand button and go 45. If you have a scientific calculator, you may have to put in the 45 first and then hit the hand in button go. Okay. So a lot of scientific calculators are going to that. When I'm awake all this for one, I have to put in 45 first.
All right, so this is what we're going to do now, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to, we are finding what angle has a tangent of 1.5. So here we have the angle, here we're trying to find the angle. So if I have the, hi, if I have the angle, I'm going to use the straight trade button. If I'm trying to find the angle, so we're finding angles, I'm going to use the second function button, or it might be a shift, and then I'm going to put in tangent, and then I'm going to put in 1.5, and then it equals around 2. So if you have a graphing calculator, okay, so if you were doing the second one now, though, okay, so where can I give a Ladies and gentlemen, if you put 10 of 1.5 in your calculator, you're going to get this. That is incorrect. Okay, if you are solving for angles, you have to use both the second function tangent or also a shift tangent. So I go to second function. Angle F in the triangle. 
the top one. So I'm going to indicate it here just because that helps me remember. I find if I don't draw it in, I lose it, but they don't see it. So what side is three now? Ah, switch. Did you guys notice that? Okay, what's the four? Okay, so the ratio of tan F is four divided by three.
the longest side. So 13 is greater than 12, right? Okay, so let's do, we're going to do the sine of angle B. So when I give you this, I'm looking for the ratio. And ratio, I'm looking for the fraction. So sine of angle B is equal to opposite of the hypotenuse. Sine is opposite. Oh. Five over thirteen. Now we didn't label thirteen as our hypotenuse, but I think we all know it's one side. It's the last one that doesn't have a title on it. So okay, now what about cos of angle B? Okay. So let's flip for a second and do sine of angle F. So now I'm here at angle F. What is the five now? It's the adjacent side. And what's the 12? In my hypotenuse change? No. Hypotenuse doesn't change. Your opposite and adjacent will flip based on what angle you're at. So sine of F is now and cos of F. 5 over 13. What do you notice? It's switched, right? They're the same, but they're the opposite. Okay. All right. They're switched. I like, I kind of like switched. They're the same, but they're opposite. It's a little misleading. They 